let us solve the seventh question of paper two, guys. This is a question from section two. So what we need to take care over here is there are more than one option correct. So we'll have to take care about that. Okay. So in an experiment, m grams of compound X taken in a container is loaded in a balance as shown in the figure one below. In the presence of magnetic field, the pan with X is either deflected upwards or deflected downwards. Depending on the compound X, identify the correct statements. So let us look at the diagram guys. Okay. So this is a diagram which is given over here. Uh, don't get deflected by the diagram guys. It is nothing but a simple question on magnetism. Whether the compound is attracted towards the magnetic field or it is not attracted towards the magnetic field. We already know something and what is that? If a compound is paramagnetic, then it will be attracted. If it is diamagnetic, then it will be deflected. Yes. So let us look at the options. If X is H2O, deflection of the pan is upwards. Is H2O diamagnetic? Yes, it is. So the pan will get deflected upwards. That is correct. If X is K4, Fe, Cn6, deflection of the pan is upwards. What would be the oxidation state of Fe? Oxidation state of Fe is plus 2. Cn is a strong ligand. It will force the pairing of electrons. So if all the electrons are paired, then what will happen? That this compound will show what? Will show diamagnetic character. That is, this will also be deflected upwards. If X is O2, deflection of the pan is downwards. O2 is paramagnetic, guys, right? So if O2 is paramagnetic, then it will be attracted towards what? towards the magnetic field so option c is also correct okay let us look at the last option if x is c6 h6 deflection of the pan is downwards now what is c6 h6 is it paramagnetic no it is diamagnetic right so this option is what this option is wrong guys okay so answer to this question is a b and C guys okay let us look at the next question from this section that is question number eight guys which of the following plots are correct for the given reaction p naught is the initial concentration of p okay so this is a nucleophilic substitution reaction this is tertiary butyl bromide reacting with NaOH giving you tertiary butyl alcohol and NaBr okay so what are the options we have we have a lot of graphs given over here guys okay there are four graphs given over here so first of all let us focus on the reaction guys what kind of reaction is this this is sn1 that is order of the reaction over here is what order of the reaction over here is one so if the order is one, then T half is independent of initial concentration that we all know. So your option A is correct. Okay. Now, what about the rest of the options guys? Let's see. Initial rate is independent of P naught. No, initial rate will depend on P naught. Okay. Q upon P naught is increasing like this no it will be an exponential graph guys it will be increasing it will become constant okay and then the last option p upon p naught increasing with time no it would be it would be decreasing with time guys so the answer over here is what the answer over here is option one that is a guys only one option correct for this guys okay that was your question number eight. Let us move on to question number nine. Which among the following statements is are true for extraction of aluminum from bauxite? So just quickly recollect the process of extraction of aluminum from bauxite. Option A, hydrated Al2O3 precipitates when CO2 is bubbled through a solution of sodium aluminate. So if I want to precipitate Al2O3 
from sodium aluminate can i bubble co2 yes then it will give you what then it will give you al2o3 back okay and what it will give you sodium bicarbonate so option a is correct option a is what option a is correct okay next option addition of na3alf6 lowers the melting point of alumina alumina is al2o3 right so as you add na3alf6 and you add caf2 what happens to the melting point melting point lowers guys okay so option b is also correct okay co2 is evolved at the anode during electrolysis so what happens over here guys f2 which is liberated reacts with what reacts with al2o3 and it gives you what it gives you al f3 plus oxygen is liberated now this oxygen which is liberated reacts with what this oxygen liberated reacts with carbon anode and it gives you what it gives you co and co2 it gives you co and co2 so the option third is also correct guys okay the cathode is a steel vessel with lining of carbon so that lining of carbon acts like cathode right that is correct and the vessel is of steel that is also correct so option d is also correct so in this case all the options are correct guys okay so is this clear to everybody yes so this is your ninth question let us move on to the 10th question guys